Right, good afternoon everybody. Hope you're having a fantastic day. Today, as you can see, I'm off to the right-hand side of the screen. On the left-hand side, we've got Chris Jones with his tiny cup, an absolutely tiny cup. Um, he is, uh, well, I'm actually, I'm gonna let him introduce himself and um, what he's all about. So, make sure, of course, you are subscribed, guys. Turn on those notifications. We will be going live a few times this week. Leave any questions to Chris down below as well as we go through this kind of little chat because I'm sure he'll ping off in the comments of the next couple of days to answer your question because I, I know there will be. And of course, smash that like button for more stuff like this. Now, now, please introduce yourself. Yes, guys, what is going on? So my name is Chris Jones. I am born and bred within a little a little town called Narbeth within Wales, within the United Kingdom. Um, as you can tell from the accent, for any guys who follow Johnny in the US, what up? <laughs> so, so yeah, I, I'm, I'm 26 years old. Um, so I, what to say, you know what? I, I'm, I'm usually very clear when it comes to this stuff. Um, you know, there's, there's been a lot of stuff that's happened in terms of where, what I've gone through in order to like get where I am now to be on video with you, John. So, you know, a lot, in, in a sense, long story short, um, I was a personal trainer for four years in and around gyms within the UK. Some was uh, in Cardiff, which was Pure Gym, in Bristol, which was David Lloyd's. Um, from there, you know, it sounds very cheesy, but I needed to get out of the industry. I needed to like become an entrepreneur. I needed to do something different. Uh, one night after the gym, I, I went home, I opened up the laptop, and then I started to, you know, open up to this whole online industry. So um, anyway, three years later, um, I've turned over $440,000 in sales, which is equivalent to 330 pound, 330 pound, that would be a small amount, 330,000 pound UK, and I've sold over 28,500 units. Um, most of that most of that revenue is coming from the, the supplements industry, so pre-workouts, L-carnitine, green tea extract, and then 12% of that revenue is coming from my coffee business, which is bottoms up. So, <laughs> so yeah, so I've been doing that, primarily selling within the UK. I've dabbled within Germany when it comes to Amazon selling. Uh, but yeah, I've just built this whole this whole concept of what I've done around the private labeling industry. So, so yeah, it's, it's been a very kind of like fast motion over the last three years. It's kind of just happened. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah. Sure, yeah. That is it. So to, to kind of sum that up, Amazon Seller, you started about three years ago and previously to that, you were kind of doing personal training. And like many people probably watching, um, like let's, let's actually go back to that maybe that first year or even the first kind of three to six months of setting up. What were the things that got you started? Because whenever you start as an entrepreneur and you start having to put money into things, everything gets a little bit serious. You get a bit worried about fear of failure. How did you deal with that? you know way yes. back when let's take a trip down memory lane yeah good question so um working as a personal trainer um my wage was nothing much more than 1200 pound uk which is about 1500 dollars in a 30, 30 um, day period within a month mm -hmm. um so obviously i was living in, in a, a very expensive part of england which was bristol it was in clifton for people who can relate to that the rent was upwards of 700 pounds the bills on top didn't really leave too much room for luxuries or savings or any terms of you know whether i wanted to go out for a meal on a saturday or whatever it was um so the the actual affordability for starting this was pretty much at nothing um, I had the idea when I had no money, so I spent the time that I had on just researching the business model. I didn't think too much about where where the money was going to come from. All that I saw within my head was a vision of I'm gonna I'm gonna earn a lot of money by this. I'm gonna change my entire life, and from all of that, all the structures, the processes that I went through to learn it, I then pitched this idea, this whole structure. I pretty much blueprinted the whole business model of what was selling on Amazon to someone that I met in the gym. Thank good. Goodness. Um, and then it all went from there. So I started with about $3,000, which I secured the investment in. I gave up 25% equity within my business, which is a limited company in the UK. I retained 75%, and then that's where it all started. Um, I moved home just again. I moved home from Bristol, and I actually moved into my granddad's spare room in his house. And for, for the next six months, I like relentlessly just tried to learn as much as I possibly could on this business model. Then on the seventh month, I launched the first product, which was l -Carnitine. So this l -Carnitine product, um, and that done over 90 sales in the first 24 hours. Yeah. Within 12 hours, it went to the actual bestseller tag. 
um, and it retained that place of nothing short of eight to ten sales a day for the first eight to twelve months of going live in the UK. Um, so, in the first year, we packed, we you know we had to we had to register for BAT very very early on. Mm-hmm. All of that became very overwhelming. Like holy, what all of this money coming in? You know what to do? What do I spend it on? You know all of the <laughs> things that were in my life before. Um, so yeah, so uh, again, long story short, or or the answer when it comes to it is, I got the investment, and I believe if you do have the idea and the structure is there in order to secure that investment needed, then you will be able to get it. And remember for those people who are looking for capital like this, there's two ways to get investment in terms of you've got the idea which has to which has to work, so you have to execute that properly, and it also comes from you as a person. How driven are you to actually get all of this done? So, you know, by ha- by having that attitude of like nothing's gonna stop me, we need to get this going, then that will that will really help you to secure a, a higher investment as well. That's amazing. And and just kind of going back to a little bit of what you said there. Um, you said it after what, like six months or so, you actually managed to launch the product. Um, yeah. Yeah. Now, a lot, a lot of people, and you probably get this quite a lot as well, is the people asking, "Well, I've been looking for two weeks and I can't find a product." Um, and, but obviously, you know, how long did how long did it take for you to decide on your product and go into the kind of supplement industry, um, which yeah. you know there is more, you know, regulations on what you can and can't sell, trading standards of what has to be on the packaging. Um, yeah. So obviously, yeah. it took you a while to do that, but um, I guess. How, how long did that process take you? And then once you decided, right, I'm going to sell this, this particular supplement, yeah. how, bringing it to market, how long did it take? Well, I've got a very, very simple and short answer for that. And people won't believe this. Um, I've told this on many other podcasts that I've done. So I actually guessed, completely guessed this first supplement. I did, and this sounds crazy. It sounds like no Kim way did he guess this product because this product's made me over one hundred and ten thousand pounds in the last near two years. So like the last the last two and a half years. So I, I got into the supplement. In the, I got into the fitness industry as a personal trainer. I started to use all these supplements. My three main supplements were L carnitine that I used used for years. It helped me to like you know stay trim, keep my appetite into like control because I'm a big eater. Green tea extract and creatine. So those were like the three or four main ones, including the pre workout. So from that, I said, which one do I take the most? All right, I'm going to form a supplement company so I don't have to keep spending so much money on these supplements. <laughs> so I was like, right, which one should I sell? Which one should I sell? I didn't have a clue about product research. All that I saw on screen was, Chris, if you sell these products on Amazon, you can make money. That's all I saw. That's all I saw. I didn't know about the regulations. I didn't know about the approval process. I didn't know about the account setup. I didn't even know that you had to have a seller central Amazon account at this point. I guessed the product and from there, the very first thing I did was what can I name this business and what's the logo what logo after that's done I then I run suppliers and I was like really didn't have a clue what I was doing I was like have you got this uh, L-carnitine in um, and I picked up my pot that I was using uh, 60 capsules 500 milligrams they were like yeah that's going to cost £3.50 oh happy days and I looked on Amazon like okay I can sell that for £15 and literally that is all that it took for me <laughs> thank goodness because there was investment not coming from my own bank account into that it paid off exactly thank and that, that, <laughs> that's incredible yeah. now yeah. For, for those people that, that are looking to get into kind of supplements and stuff like that well I need to put my charger in, in a second um, yeah. looking to get into supplements and stuff like that now um, I know um, for kind of private labeling and selling kind of random products on Amazon, most people would go to China, to Alibaba, Alibaba to get those sourced. Um, now, when selling things like supplements and, and particularly like food, coffee, that sort of stuff, um, yeah. why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you do that? Just because the the certifications you don't you do, for more so than anything, it's peace of mind factor. The, the, by you simply asking that question, questions that whole process. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You always want to ship domestically. You do not want, as um, I won't say, it, as someone else said, you don't want not nasty stuff to be in the supplements. This is for actual human consumption. So we are taking these products. Our customers are taking these products. And the way that I look at it, and not the time, I didn't know whether I should source from China or Southeast Asia or the UK at the time. I didn't know that. All that I found was the first supplier on Google when I typed in how to private label an L carnitine supplement. I gave them a call. Nice. Thank goodness they were the ones in the UK. So really I've learned through that process to avoid it overseas when it does come to 
uh, when it does come to consumables, just because you are a higher chance of risk, in my opinion. Um, and when it comes to certifications and documents, you just want to keep that close to home. Mm-hmm. You want to keep that close to home and know that you can rely on someone that's that, that's trusted, that you can speak to over the phone, that you can drive a couple of hours and see. So that's what really, really started to stand out with me. Absolutely. Well, yeah, so you, you want something that is quality, something that you can trust. Um, and yeah, something you can actually visit the factory as well. You could visit yeah. them if you'd like and, and see the manufacturing process and yeah. and all that sort of stuff. So yeah, and pick up the phone. So that is for any advice for any people that are looking to get out there and and do those sorts of things, consumable stuff. Then yeah, try and do it lo- locally. That's the main yeah, thing. Locally. For sure. And of course, then you've got domestic shipping, which means you don't have to go through some of the complications when it comes to overseas shipping, sea freight or air freight. It's very simple. So my supplier in the UK, so our order, let's say I placed an order three weeks ago, he'll be able to get that product into Amazon within three days. Two days after that, it's processed and received into my inventory. Within six to seven days maximum, it's there available for sale. Amazing. And yeah. that, that, that shipping is, that, that, let's say that, like, that, that delivery over to Amazon in a truck is so cheap, so cheap mm-hmm. that it doesn't even affect that end invoice, where it's like, it's so, it's so much, it's just hassle-free, bro. It just works. Yeah, exactly. Because I, I know that when I have, like, sea shipping, for example, you have freight forwarder, very, very long process. And But actually, the, the expensive part, of course, is the, the actual, like, the customs clearance and all that, the actual yeah. shipping. But then the delivery yeah. from, let's say, like, a port, Southampton port, whatever, to yeah. Amazon is, like, 70 quid. It's, you know, it's, it's, it's hardly anything compared to the total yeah. shipment. So um, I guess you would pay more, maybe, for the supplements from the UK in terms of the raw materials, but you would save yeah. the money on the, the other costs, I guess, right? Yeah, correct, 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 yeah. most definitely. So, um, yeah, again, so... A really good thing that I like is with supplements, you can. There's a very simple way of differentiating, and that's you've got your standard. So you've got that standard. Um, you've got a standard supplement base, which is L time five hundred milligram. That's that's the standard. Mm-hmm. But then you can go with a custom formula, and you can start to add in plus vitamin D twenty milligram, mm-hmm. plus vitamin C, plus iron, plus ZMA, whatever works with the supplement and result that you're trying to provide someone. Mm-hmm. Then you can actually custom for an added price into that formula, and that's where I. I think when people who, who ask me, Chris, you've done so well in the supplement market, how do I do it? How do I stand out and be unique? The, the, the things that I look at is ingredient profile. So what's missing on the, the category that you're looking to sell in that you can really provide a better solution to, a bigger experience at a, high, at a, at a better price. And then it's simply the visual presence. Mm -hmm. Um, I look at the visuals when it comes to Amazon exactly like when I'm scrolling through Netflix, obviously for the one time a month I'm allowed to watch it. And then on the YouTube channels as well from the guys I follow, like the thumbnail is everything. And I identify that for the featured image, and I'll relate this to the supplements now on any product, the featured image, which is our first image when people are scrolling through Amazon on the search engine, that's what they're looking at. Mm-hmm. They're looking at the price, looking at reviews, and initially on the featured image. Now, with the supplements, because it's such a furious market and there's so many of them, you need to focus massively on your visual presence. If you can nail that down with a differentiation factor and business concept that comes into it, I think you can do extremely well. So that's what people need to focus on. If you are tapping up these big industries such as coffee, Do something different. Do something like Death Wish Coffee has done. They've marketed themselves as the the world's most strongest coffee. Mm -hmm. So we start to take that as inspiration and go, okay, so they've got that. How can I do this? And how can I do this? And that's the way to win, really. So it's always about differentiating yourself as a a brand and as a seller um, and just making sure the branding is on point. And branding is super important. So let's actually talk about a little bit about branding. And I'm, I'm not sure if you remember, when you started up, um, you know this this line of products. How much did you kind of dedicate towards your brand in terms of money, getting logos, getting like all that sort of stuff made? Like, you know, did you set aside? Oh, I'm going to put you know, aside five hundred you know dollars, thousand dollars to do that. You know, what, what did yeah. it look like? I, I I just went through a very kind of step by step process. I mean, I didn't know. I didn't know what what I was doing really at the time. So whatever whatever the next step was, I, I would just I would come to it and then I would get it done and so on and so on. So the logo I think I spent 
maybe £150 on the logo. So that was the actual like picture logo and the text logo with a tagline. So great, that's easy. You can now get that done on the likes of like Canva.com, guys. So all of this, all of the resources that we have online for like graphics and photos, it's pretty much available to us for free unless we want to go the real premium. Um, so I would say with the label, another two or three hundred and at the time john i didn't really know what to compare that to so it was pretty much negotiation was bad at that point because i just wouldn't get this fucking product out so it was like 300 pound quote happy days pay it 145 pound for logo yeah perfect perfect let's move on move on so it was like i focused heavily on what the branding looked like so in terms of okay is that exactly what i want people to pick up when it arrives at the house will that put a smile on the face how are they going to feel now, I, I, I heavily focus my marketing efforts and branding efforts on relatability. It's something we spoke about before we hit the call. And, and this is something that was quoted by Scott Fleer of Rugby Warfare. He said, people are drawn to a tribe of people. They, they, people, are, people are drawn to people. Now, it's like the Gymshark tribe, exactly like Scott quoted. If you feel part of a family and that family be the brand, then you, you are just going to become a thriving and evergreen loyal customer. So it all starts with the branding and the purpose and meaning of that whole business concept. So more than anything, I, I like, I don't, I don't just advise people. I urge people to focus so much on the core values of a business as opposed to how, how can I sell more of this product? When people ask the question of how can I sell more of this product, they've missed the point. Mm -hmm. It's more so how can I serve a bigger, better, and brighter solution in someone's life with this thing that I'm about to bring to market? And when they can answer that question with their brand, then they can move it forward. Mm -hmm. That's great. That's, a, that's really good advice, guys. Write that down. Rewatch it. Go back a few minutes. Rewatch it again. Um, now, in terms of that, on that note, right? What would for a for a beginner? There's two questions I want to ask. So I'm going to go with the first one, right? First one is what is the three or the five or the ten or the one bits of advice that you would give a a newbie, right? Someone that is looking to get started or has just started wanting to sell and create a brand on Amazon. What is what is the main bits of advice that maybe you have to give again and again and again? Yeah. So it's. It's the 90% of the question I get is, Chris, how can I choose a product that's going to make me money? Um, and that is probably the most annoying question that I get because, again, like we just talked about, it's the product that people are so, so fixated on. They're not fixated on – how, how I really think people look at this is they've got the product, they're putting it on Amazon, and from there, it's like the customer doesn't even exist. It's like they're just putting the product up and then that's it. They forget about everything else after that initial sale has been made. And when people start to look away from that and they've made the sales and they focus, and this comes down to product research and all elements of market research within industries, focus on what happens after the sale. And this is key for building like seven plus figure businesses. Many people focus on how do I make more sales online on Amazon? The, the question that people should be asking themselves is, how can I get that customer and turn, because we, we this is what people need to understand as well. When it comes to Amazon and we've made our sales, they are not our customers. That is just someone placing a fucking order. That's Amazon's customers. Have we got the email from that order? No, we haven't. That's Amazon's customer. Now we need to focus our efforts, and this will help a lot of people on my Facebook as well, is, we need to focus our attention on what happens after that sale. When that product arrives in the orderer's house, how do we turn that sale from a customer, from, from a sale to an actual customer, and then from them being a customer, how do we retain the customer to rinse and repeat that process with current and future, future fresh customers? Um, so that, more so than ever, focus on the end experience, the result, the benefits of what your products can provide. Um, and instead of looking at products, specifically like I'm going to sell a camera stand, look around the market, the actual industry, look on Google Trends and see what as a whole what that category is doing in terms of demand, um, as opposed to just being an opportunity seeker and just looking where the money is. That's I mean, you can, you can earn money for six months and then it dies. Or you can build a brand and you can build something that's fucking real that really people are going to talk and rap and rave about, which again is going to cause a higher acquisition when it comes to the end sale of your business. 
focus on the longevity as opposed to the short-term gratification all the time and step away from product research and start to step into market analysis, market research, and then that will open you up to more doors of, okay, brilliant, I've got the market research here, now I can step back and go through the life cycle of a customer. So if they're gonna, if we're gonna start a coffee company, first we're gonna start by selling the coffee beans. Now once someone's got the coffee beans, not everyone has a grinder, so we're gonna release ground coffee. Now if we've got these two coffees add as a blend, now how do we how do we further develop that brand? Now we bring out single origin coffee from Guatemala, from India, from Africa. After that, we release accessory products, our own sources, and so on and so on. That's what people need to focus on. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, I, and that was a big tip. That's that was a that's, big, that's a very big tip, and I just want to kind of relay that and relate that to other companies. So, yeah. um, for example, there's two big companies we can relate this to, and one is from, well, both from experience, actually. The first is I used to work for Apple for about five years, and all the, all of their training, and I used to do their training as well, teach the people how to do Apple, right? All of it was about how do you create a customer for life? How do you turn that customer from buying an iPhone case to then yeah. buying their next iPhone, Mac, you know, whatever, from the Apple Store, right? And it's all about the the support network. The same with Amazon. They have incredible support services. And sometimes it's negative in, in as a seller in our favor. They'll just give refunds left, right, and center. They don't care, right? They want to keep their customers happy. And that's the main thing. As Like you said, as a seller, as someone creating a business, it's all about after the sale, when that person gets it in their, in their hands, when they unwrap it from the Amazon box, is it just exactly. in a little jiffy bag or is it like in a nice package? We open it like, wow, I like this. I'll put it on the side. I'll put it on my Instagram, like uh, my Instagram feed, just having my, you know, whatever. Um, and it's all about that. And so th those are really, really important points, guys. Make yeah. sure that you take note of that because that is a key, key point for building a company. Like you said, to, to basically, if you want to sell it, it's worth more money. Yeah, another point I'll add to that, and I, I hope this helps a lot of people and adds value. Um, for anybody that's doing product in search right now, great job, like thumbs up, tap on the back, that's great. You've got that part nailed down. But what I'm seeing and what I'm hearing 99.9% .9 of the time, when people do inserts, I'm like, great job, fucking respect. But when they tell me what's on that insert, is that totally makes me want to defriend them and walk away. Like most people are doing the inserts, great visuals, fantastic visuals, but the text is saying, if you can just imagine, I'll, I'll say this now. So we open up a box, happy days, new pairs, new pair of shoes from a company we don't know. And the first thing we see in this beautiful box is a nice visual insert card, like card. And the first thing it says, is thank you for your purchase. Could you please go and note your experience with us on the Amazon list that you've bought and leave us an honest review? Why the, would you do that when they haven't even checked out the boots, they haven't even worn the product, they don't know who you are as a brand, and you're asking for something before you even gave even more extended value? Like, you should not be doing that. In, in your on your product insert, if you're doing that now, chuck it in the bin. <laughs> what you should be re relaying is doing something in terms of talking about your business concept, your meaning, your the impact that you want to serve to your customers and in life, the the mission, the mission statement of why you started this company, where where your vision is in five years time. From there, you should be able to send those people to your web website, and then you should be able to give more value, give more value, give more value, customer, from that trust base, then, only then, you should be asking back for an honest review. But the, the biggest thing here is, people are always asking how to get reviews, like fucking hell, focus on your customers, instead of this, why don't you start by creating an awesome product that you don't even have to ask for a review for because when it turns up in the customer's house, the first thing they do is open the box and they're so excited that they go back to the Amazon list and they go, thank you so much, this product is awesome. Exactly. That's what you need to be doing. And that's it. A lot of designers talk about this where they're, when they're designing products, is they want people to have a certain feeling that they know that a lot of thought and a lot of intent has gone into creating that product. And that is when people will be appreciative and they'll do it off their own back without having an email follow-up, without having whatever. They'll get the normal Amazon, you know, the automated Amazon um, email. And they'll be like, you know what? Yeah, these guys deserve it. I'm going to leave a review. Um, so that's, that is, again, a massive, massive tip. Knowledge drop bomb right there. We love it. <laughs> um, right, so 
let's uh, there's a, uh, the other question I had um, just before we talk about the kind of another topic, right? Um, the other question I had is about really uh, you probably get this question is when's the best time to start? What you know people sitting on the edge like oh you know can I make money from it? How much money can I make? Um, you know what would you what do you normally tell people about you know when is the best time to start, right? Yeah, um, it, that's a really good question as well. So. Um, I would say start as soon as you can, the best you can. So if you can't afford it right now, get to a place within your life where you can afford it. If you don't want to wait that long, then there's separate options. So let's say you, you work your nine to five, you're stuck in this work, you don't want to be there. It's exactly like I was, John. I know that feeling. Um, you've got you've got the chance of working for another six to 12 months and just gritting your teeth and getting on with it, putting the savings by month by month by month until you have the investment total you know, needed. If you don't want to wait that time, then there are some other options. So go over to some funding places, some loan places, some grant websites. You know, I would I would personally even go to the extent if I was in such a, a, a desired position, I would ask friends and family to lend money. If I was that confident in the process and like the approach of what I was going in for, I would have no hesitation, you know, in asking friends or family, can I lend some money? Um, I think people need to step away from at the end of the day, they're friends and family, so they're the closest people to you, um, and they're the ones who should believe in you. But if you don't want to do that, that's fine. There's also websites like cabbage.com, started with a K. That's like a loan and funding um, website. Also, Funding Circle, fundingcircle.com. There is also credit cards that you can take out. Not that I'm saying get yourself into debt. If you can do a startup of two thousand pound, then if you have the credit to do that, I would recommend going through that route um, because time is money to me is, is if you can get this up and running you can pay that off and then you can continue your business uh, another another way to do it and I've totally lost um, thought of what you asked me now John doesn't matter doesn't matter just keep going <laughs> <laughs> is, is, is putting the business plan together and you know with, with, the, with Amazon it's so good is the business model is there it's set in stone because over 43 percent of all online transactions are now happening on amazon.com just by that statistic alone if you go and pitch someone who's got a bit of money spare and most of the investors that people need to keep in mind of if some of them just want another venture some of them want to be in a new business model that excites them that helps them to do something with their day um so again reach out to an investor people you know who might have the capital spare john relay your question bro <laughs> uh, it, was, it was kind of like when 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 should someone get started like okay. like i guess this comes down to a few questions um let me let me go over my thought process first right first a lot of people say oh well you know it's too saturated okay second thing is people say well you know why do it in the uk when you can do it in the us because there's more volume of sales so i'm, I'm sure people will ask you that got the postman here i'm sure people will ask you the same questions but what would you what what would what do you what would you tell someone that's saying I want to start but these are my my concerns with starting? I'd say you have not done enough product oh I was gonna say product research, <laughs> market research. You just haven't you haven't dedicated the time to do to do adequate research on this to secure your decision. I mean you've seen the you've seen the screenshots of these products that I've been screenshotting from Amazon and putting up. I'm doing that like three to five times a day. I'm finding products in my spare time, in between calls, in between doing my Amazon stuff to to show people look, you do not have to take twenty four thousand weeks to find a single product to make you a thousand pounds that profit a month you can do this if you have the structures tools and resources online which are available to us that you can actually get this get this going if you're if you're incompetent in the process within yourself then go to someone who's doing this day in day out someone who's earning the money someone who's living it right now so you don't have to waste the time the best time to start is is right now the next best time to start is in a minute's time. That's the, that's the way that I like to go. Um, so if you, again, this comes down to if you feel that you're not confident yet, I believe that you haven't done enough research in order to add that sense of confidence to yourself. Um, so again, if research more, watch more YouTube videos, read more blogs, speak to more people like Johnny, speak to more people like I, speak to Greg Mercer from Jungle Scout, reach out to people who are living that right now to secure you a little more. Ask to see some of the screenshots. Ask to see what products people are selling. Ask them to explain their BSR. What does that mean? All of that good stuff, because that's only going to help people. Absolutely. So just kind of surround yourself with the business model, so that you get you get desensitized to the 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 kind of I don't know 
the not the downside, but the 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 concerns that you had before. You get desensitized to them, and that is that is great advice. Thank you for that. That's really cool. Um, yeah. Now, in terms of Amazon, you love Amazon. I love Amazon. Um, a lot of people who watch my channel do as well. Um, so, of course, they, they can go over to because you let's talk about the other side of things that you do, right? Because personally, yeah, um, Amazon is one thing that you've done and you've, you've done that for, for quite a while yeah. and successful at it and you've built brands and everything like that, which is which is awesome. Um, but the other side of things you do is you you have a personal brand. And I like talking about this on, on my channel. I like yeah. talking about things like affiliate marketing as well as other business opportunities. Um, let's talk a little bit about what you have done. Primarily, um, you started really from, I guess, I, I might be wrong with this, but Facebook. Correct. Um, but let's talk a little about that because I don't really do a lot on Facebook. Uh, okay. I've kind of stuck to, to YouTube, but I just want to understand your process and how you okay. started. So on the flip side, so I, I, I wasn't doing much with YouTube, but now like we've connected a bit through here because I've watched your content and I'm like, Johnny's killing it on YouTube. I've got to get a piece of that pie, baby. <laughs> so I actually... <laughs> so I actually started on Facebook, very simple, because I thought, okay, how can I get more clients through personal training when I was working in Cardiff? So I started to take pictures of the guns, started taking pictures, a bit of selfie, just putting myself out there a little more. I did more of an experiment, started up a Facebook profile, but at the time I was still like putting pictures up in my social life, and it wasn't too professional. Um, from there then, how it, how it all started with the Amazon personal brand stuff is – when I started to earn really, really good money, like turning thirty thousand pound a month um, on Amazon and stuff, I started to I started to just screenshot because I, I was in such disbelief myself <laughs> that like a dropout college guy and like a guy that quits his nine to five jobs all the time could earn this money, you know, from a simple action phase. I started to screenshot my earnings, like not not to be big headed or to boast or brag, just like holy. Like how 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 am I how am I doing this? So I started to put that on there, and I started to just get very natural responses from friends, from family, from people around the area, um, asking me how to do this, how to do that. And then I started to simply, very naturally, just talk about oh, I actually just I contacted the supplier, very like dumbed down. Then I I did this, and then I wrote like the title, which is called like listing optimization, and people just started to ask the questions. Then I, be, I became more confident in video, so I started doing like video a year and a half ago. Um, I started to write my blog, so I, I gained confidence in that. That actually took a lot of attention off my Amazon business, which was where all of that nearly failed. So that was a that was a very struggling point for me. As all of my information stuff went up with my teaching, my Amazon business started to go down in terms of like, when something new comes into your life, usually your current or older stuff that you have attention to becomes stagnant or drops in attention. Um, but anyway, so moving on, I just started to keep more things on Facebook, speak as honestly and transparently as I possibly could about all of the processes. Um, I started to involve my, my loves, my interests, my hobbies, such as working out and all of that stuff. Um, and then it, it just, it just, it almost like a snowball effect. I just... I started to get a lot, like a lot of private messages. People asking me to do this and do that. And there was one point that I was helping people for free, like write their listings and people were doing really well. They were coming back like, Chris, I'm doing like 10 sales a day now. And I was thinking, holy shit, I should have charged for that. <laughs> so I started to just put a price on my my calls per hour. And I was like, I'm going to test this to someone. And Ivan, if you're watching this right now, I think he was my first call. And I think I charged something like, 49 pound or 70 pound for a one hour call and i was like what's the response going to be yes okay book it 12 o'clock <laughs> tuesday happy days so that from there i started to replicate that process and i started to see all of these results come in in terms of testimonials i'm going to link below all the testimonials that we that i so people can relate to this john um and it was just a great feeling so i started to do this more i started to take my blog to new levels then i started to reach out to types of uh, Jungle Scout, Greg Mercer. Then I became a moderator in the biggest Amazon group on Facebook. And then the rest is history, John. Here I am in the hustle station, drinking coffee all day long and speaking to you, bro. <laughs> and that's it. Because many, many people would probably have seen you on the, um, the, um, uh, the Jungle Scout bloody <laughs> Facebook page. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's FBA competitive. Edge. That's the one. Yeah, competitive. Edge. Yeah, that's the one. I, I, I knew it. I'm more of like a YouTube name. I know new YouTube names and videos. <laughs> Facebook, not so much. Um, so you start. You started that about what a year, year and a half ago. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. And I, started, I started going into these groups in terms of like, right, I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna I'm gonna test myself in terms of knowledge here. And like the response I got was crazy. So I started to write like really informative tutorial blogs in these groups and then the, the kickback of that was like awesome. Um, but I, I never like people have called me like oh that Amazon guru, that Amazon expert. Like no, I am not that. I don't want to be named as that at all. For one, I have not done an even close to some of the sales that some other people have, I think what I've done in all honesty and transparency is I've marketed myself better. Yep. Now, and, that, and that's it. And you're, you're relatable because this is a thing that many people will watch this channel before for. And we've talked about, I've got loads of hair in front of my screen. Um, but we, we talked about this just before we kind of um, started recording is about how relatability is so important. Like a lot of people will follow my channel and this channel right now is because I'm, I just literally, I'm in, I'm English. So I just, I'm from Britain and they want to yeah. learn from someone that is English. The same with you. Like people want to, and again, that's not saying that like, that's a, it's a bad thing not to be English. It's just saying yeah. that people want to relate to someone in the country that they're selling in or the country that they live. Yeah. Um, so that, that has been super helpful for me. And I know it's been helpful for you and all that sort of stuff. Uh, and then uh, the more, the merrier, right? The more people sharing information, the better information that we're going to get, because I know that people will come to me for, for some, you know, some advice, but then, Hey, look, if they want to build a, a, a brand and particularly like a supplement or anything like that, then you're going to be the person to go to, right? Because mm -hmm. because you've you've been asked the question way way more many times, and on the personal branding note though, did you find that putting yourself out there and having the ability for people to approach you and ask questions did how did that upskill you as an Amazon seller? I would say that I didn't have any direct let's say algorithmic benefits with my products. Yeah. In in short, that that teaching process and the value that I've provided to others, I, I don't think that's resulted in direct sales or any BSR spikes from my products. It's just it's just shown realness and openness of, okay, so we've got a product here that's under my name, I show my listing, I show you what I'm doing, and I think that's what people like. But in terms of direct sales, they'll take inspiration, but they won't make to purchase, which is absolutely fine, because that is not what I'm looking for. Yeah, okay. Because that was always yeah. a concern with me, and I, you know, I've, I've kind of messaged you on the on Facebook yeah, about this. Yeah, that was that was good actually. But yeah. that, that was a conversation we had, and like I told you fully that like, no, I. And another thing that we're, we've got two types of people in this world is we will give all say like I'm a billionaire baby. I've got all the billions in the bank, right? <laughs> so everyone's everyone's to come to me to for advice. Now you've got two people. One comes and he takes all the advice, and then he goes and makes a billion pound himself. Then the other person takes all the advice and more but goes and loses money now this is why i was i was thinking this before should i put my alcantan green tea extract product out and i was thinking yes because there was very few people who were going to copy and actually take action on this and take action on other categories not to add insult or harm at all but that's the way that we're functioned as humans um so at the end of that i was like in a sense, Chris, grow up, put it out there, don't be so stupid, it's going to help a lot of people, it's going to help you relate to more people to help your personal brand, and that's what I've done, I've done that for since I've started now. That's amazing, so that's that's really cool, and that's, a lot of people don't do that, and I think that's very powerful for being able to actually share that as well, especially as you know, it's something you've built over a long period of time, and this is the other thing I want to you know remember, uh, or get people to remember, is that, um, so currently you're doing, in terms of yearly turnover, What was what did you say? Earlier? Uh, so I turned in the first year, I turned £240,000, which I'm not sure what that equivalent uh, equivalents to uh, US, but in total turnover, $446,000, which is uh, nearly 29,000 units sold. And for anybody wondering, oh, I'm going to go into the coffee industry, I'm going to go into the supplement industry, just to give you a breakdown of those revenue splits. So 89% of that $446,000. 89% came from the health and personal care category, which was my supplements, mm -hmm. and 11% mm -hmm. of that revenue came from coffee. Mm -hmm. So if anyone's wondering, it's 50-50 split or 75-25, it's 89% supplements, 11% revenue with a coffee. Perfect, lovely. And that's good. And how do you see that? We've kind of moved back onto Amazon, but that's okay, we don't mind. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, how, how do you see then this moving on into the 
uh, the, the future. So are you going to be uh, expanding your product ranges? Are you going to be continuing to try and grow the, the coffee side of the business to, to yeah. generate more a higher percentage of turnover? Yeah, so at the moment, I am working on a product in the US, which will be releasing in eight weeks' time. And that will be into that will be another shop for people. It's in a very high, um, high demand and authority market. Um, I've done that to test myself and almost as a case study on myself to push myself to say, okay, Chris, if you're going to do this, you have to do it right. Um, so I'm looking to expand into different categories to give myself further knowledge of all of these other industries as well as the coffee and supplements. Um, I'm now looking for like influencers for my supplements, you know, under the, under the belt so I can bring that up when I do secure someone. Um, and then I'm looking really for the next year, I'm going to focus purely on Amazon UK for my supplements and coffee and Germany. And from there, I'm going to source other other products in the US in different categories and build my expertise in those areas. So yeah, we're always looking to just push as much as I can and then helping other people with their brands as well. Exactly. So how do you see the next? Uh, how do you see the next year in terms of your your personal brand, your Amazon business? Can we know that? What about your yeah. personal brand? How do you, how do you see that? What are your what are your goals? Right. Yeah. So. In my head, like, I'm very big on like law of attraction or visionary. I mean, like I did that with like the BMW i8. I almost like I almost like brought that into my life through like visualization. Um, so I focus massively on right, put it in your head. If you can think it, if it's there, and now you've just got to make it happen. So by the end of 2018, my in my head, if this is going to happen, a strong belief it will. Um, I will have 50,000 subscribers on YouTube, and I know that I'll need to post. You know. 10 videos a week to do that, to really get my name out, to differentiate. Um, in terms of uh, gross revenue with the supplements and coffee, I really haven't had a thought about it yet. Um, in terms of my personal brand, I think I'm just going to remain as consistent as I possibly can, be myself, learn learn everything in, in like my, the Chrissy J life so I can portray to others so they can learn faster. That word will spread, people will start to share more, comment more, like, all of that good stuff, and that will take things up. Um, but yeah, in terms of all of that stuff, I, you know, I don't, I don't want to be known as that Amazon guy. I'd rather be known as that guy, if anything, that helps people build brands and seven figure businesses. So that, that is something that I'm truly working towards. That's awesome. That's awesome. So we, we're going to, we'll, we'll do another one at the end of 2018. <laughs> no one down people screenshot this whatever it be you can, you can challenge me <laughs> exactly so and i think that we can do that we need to, we need to build the uk squad right we need to build yeah, the uk yeah. squad i um, agree i agree more people with personal brands sharing their story on amazon yeah. or shopify or like affiliate marketing or more personal branding we want more yeah. people in the uk so we can so we can we can have a bit of pride in our <laughs> in our in our YouTube. John, can I add uh, yeah. one more tip to the Amazon stuff? Yes. So guys, when it comes to all of the reviews, okay. So many people are searching for criteria when it comes to product research for under fifty reviews or less. We've heard this from bigger companies in terms of recommendations. Now that isn't cemented in stone. It doesn't mean that you have to find a product to really focus on under fifty reviews. If you build your knowledge up and you work with people such as Johnny, such as other people online who know this stuff, you're able to increase those average reviews to let's say two or three hundred, where you search for products in that realm. That will open you up to new new products with higher revenue, with bigger demand, with more evergreen consistency year round. So I don't want people just to go, right, if I can't find a product that's average of 49 reviews or lower, I'm, I'm not gonna start. Open yourself up to new areas in terms of because there's so much potential. Like there is the, there's over 400 million products on Amazon, 43% coming from online transactions. So yeah, don't don't always take what you hear and cement it in stone. There are other opportunities with higher reviews. That, that's um, a very good point. So. Yeah, really, really, really good point. Sorry for cutting you off there. I didn't mean to. Um, but yeah, really, really good point. And something I've been, I, I kind of like dropped this a few times in the videos, um, but you probably have to be quite an OG subscriber to have uh, uh, watched it. OG, I love um, but <laughs> but I've start, what I've started doing is actually not looking at uh, reviews as a metric. So when I'm on Jungle Scout, I'll put in the, the price point because I know how much I can maybe afford to buy for that first shipment. Um, and actually just not look at, just not even put a metric in for the reviews and judge my decision based upon the actual sales uh, of that first page and the amount of reviews, which I will then look at. Um, because once, 
this is, I think, what because what you just mentioned there is really important. The more confidence you have, the more you look into branding, the maybe the more money you have for your launch, so for giveaways and PPC and stuff like that, the more competitive markets you can get into. Um, and then as long as, like you said, take your your advice from earlier in the video about how how you're going to get more reviews by having actually a genuinely good product um, and a good after sale service, then that's how you're going to you're going to maintain that that rank going forward. And then in a year's time, in two years' time, you might be the you might be the best seller. You might have two thousand reviews and yeah. absolutely killing it. And you might be that person making passively, which is the super important thing here, passively thousands and thousands of pounds a month yeah. for the next five years for just putting work in for six months. Exactly, exactly. And another another good thing to think about for people thinking this is overnight success or this is short term cash flow. Start to look at the bigger picture. Start to see what Amazon's doing as a company. I spoke about this earlier. Amazon has, has recently made an acquisition to Whole Foods, one of the first of many big moves of what I believe into the retail, which is the physical outlets in life. If you can bring a brand to life online, I believe that Amazon will put those products from online over to test in their Whole Foods. And you'll walk into Whole Foods at one point and you'll see your brand's products on the shelves. And they will do that as a test trial and error period. So for people worrying, oh, I'm never going to be getting into retail and just going to sell on Amazon for the rest of my fucking life. We'll start to think about the bigger picture. Look what Jeff Bezos actually started. Do you think he's going to end it here? Absolutely not. This is this is what I see, the predictability of where this is going. So bigger picture is key here, people. Exactly. And, and this is, if you look at statistics of Amazon, I know, I don't know the percentages off the top of my head right now, but obviously Amazon was started in the US. So there is more, um, <clears throat> there's a higher percentage of the population on Amazon in the US compared to the UK market versus the population so what what that says to me is that there's more growth available in the uk market because there's less people on amazon and obviously amazon's goal is to sell everything on the yeah. internet absolutely everything from a to z and to as many people as possible so the best time to get involved was yesterday right it was you know like today in one minute time yeah. because you never know in two years time in three years time five years time ten years time because um, a lot of the people that get into this are, are you know, young people like, you know, we, I'm 27, you're 26. Um, that, you know, if you can start something now that could potentially make you thousands in the future passively. And that this is what we're talking about, guys. This is why this is such a good business model is because it's you, you hardly do anything, actually. <laughs> yeah, you, what, you, you wake up to money, you go to sleep to more money. And then what? You can sit drinking coffee, looking like a all day on Facebook and then you get more money. So like the, people need to, what I don't want people to, to, to experience is their friends and family do it or people they know have been doing it and five years down the line they go, fuck, I knew, I knew I should have took that opportunity but they sat there watching other people drive these nice cars and go out for food at 2pm with whatever it is mm -hmm. and living the life they want and they didn't take the opportunity. We're not trying to sell you anything here, guys. We're just trying to like betray the potential of all of this. Yeah, definitely. And that's, it's got me pumped up. I'm going to go do some product research. And <laughs> market, do some market, go do some market research. And, uh, but this, this, this is the thing. And of, of course, at this time of year, we've got Chinese New Year around the corner. Um, so like we can all have a couple of weeks off trying to find you, you know, uh, like getting quotes and stuff like that. Um, but in terms of, I, I think this has been a great, great video. A lot of knowledge being being shared by you. So thank you for that. Uh, I think you know all of my subscribers, the people are interested in Amazon, that are either selling or looking to sell or, or you know, on the fence. Um, hopefully, that's going to give them a lot of encouragement to get started on their own journey. How, how, how doesn't matter how small that step is. Um, I think they're going to help. So um, what I will do is I, I'll ask you if there's any, anything else you want to say in a second. But uh, down below in the video, once it gets uploaded, I'm going to put in your YouTube um, so people can go have a look at you and subscribe and stuff like that. And I do urge you guys to go and go and check out Chris's channel um, because the knowledge that he's putting out is good. I wouldn't have him on the channel if I didn't think his knowledge was was great knowledge uh, and, a, and a nice guy as well. Um, so, yeah, go, go and check him out. The more people you can learn from, the better, because I don't want you guys just learning from me. I want you guys to do your own research, reach out to other people for questions, go online, look at other videos, look at other blog posts. Um, so that you you feel more comfortable to to take that that step into this this uh, yep. e-commerce you know app in this wow well, this area right so Chris um, I think we're we're kind of cracking on now for time what are we yeah we're, we're cracking on now for time so um, is there anything else you yeah. what have we want to do huh we've got the time to do whatever we, we have want the, to do well, I, I do literally have nothing else to do today but. <laughs> 
<laughs> that's just so regardless, right? Um, is there anything else you really want to say to, to everyone watching? Yes, I'd like to add like two more points because like, I, I'm crazy about just like sharing this information. Um, and I, I relatability again, guys, for anybody looking to start this business, please be in control of the finances and money you're about to earn. Like, animal, uh, Amazon is an absolute animal. So you will see if you do this right, money come into your, your account more than you've ever experienced. Now, I've been through that process and I had a lot of money hit my account every two weeks, six, eight thousand pounds plus. Every two weeks you get payments from Amazon. Please do not do what I do and go off and spend money on fancy cars, holidays, buy whatever you want thinking you're the king because guys, remember that you've got to manage your finances with your inventory and there are, you know, there's, um, there's, there's invoices that come up unexpectedly, there's payments. So I almost put my business under from not paying attention to those simple aspects. So even though you'll have all of this money come in, just remember that that money will partly be going out as well on cost and then it's what you're left over with. So the, the, the tighter you can be on yourself in terms of the further, the longer you can go without taking money from the business, the more successful you will do. You will be. I recommend reinvesting your profits into building customers off of Amazon as well, gathering emails, building up your brand, taking on influencers, all of this stuff. Reinvest in your business. Try not to wear the best clothes you possibly can until you can take money out. Um, on that note, one thing about PPC that I've learned over the last six months is the more in demand and higher popularity the category and industry you go into, the higher PPC costs are going to be on Amazon. Therefore, a pre-workout for a cost per click with Amazon advertising might be upwards of 9 or $10. And I've wow. seen that in the US. So please remember, if you're thinking of bringing a pre-workout out or a fat burner, because everyone's bringing a fat burner out, just remember that if you're selling a fat burner for $19, it costs you 6 PPC might be seven, then Amazon FBA and referral fees, you're into the red before you've even had a chance. So please think about that as well. I know that's all a lot of information, but hopefully we've, uh, we've answered <laughs> that, that's, a re that's a really good point. I didn't I didn't realize it was quite quite so high for the cost per click. <laughs> that, that's a lot. That is a lot. Um, and, you know, different, different categories will also be different. Uh, and also just because maybe some sellers don't really know how to use PPC properly. So that's, that's one thing to be aware of. But thank you for those knowledge bombs. Thank you so much. They are, they're awesome. Now, I think we will, we, will, we will round it up. Guys, if you've got any questions, um, I want you to leave them down in the comments and Chris will get back to you hopefully within the next couple of days um, yeah. just with, with his answers or stuff like that. If you've got questions for me, then that's cool as well. Um, of course, the links are down below. I want you to smash that thumbs up button. Let's give, the, uh, let's give some love to Chris. Give, smash the thumbs up if you have enjoyed this video and you've got a lot of value out of it. Of course, make sure you are subscribed, obviously, uh, and turn those notifications on. I will be going live a few times this week, giving away some money and all that sort of stuff. Um, awesome. But that's going to be it for today. Have an awesome, awesome whatever day this goes up. What day is it today? This is the yeah, passive lifestyle. It's a I, Thursday. I always ask that question. It's a, <laughs> it's a Thursday today. So this is going up on Friday. So have an awesome weekend, and I'll see you all uh, tomorrow. Bye bye. Cheers, guys.